What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Audacious Journey podcast. We have a special guest coming on today. His name is Isaiah Reed. Isaiah plays soccer at Clemson. He scored both goals as Clemson went on to win the NCAA soccer championships this year. He is an absolute tank. I'm super excited to bring him on. So everybody, please welcome Isaiah. Isaiah, what's up, man? Hey, how are you doing? And good. Thanks for coming on. So you you got to tell me about, about this rivalry with South Carolina and Clemson. I'm not from Clemson. I know Shane goes there. He's always telling me about this USC Clemson rivalry. Like, is it really that big? Yeah, it, it's pretty big. I mean, like if you live in South Carolina, you're either a Clemson fan or a South Carolina fan pretty much. And the rivalry goes deep in football, basketball, baseball, soccer, any sport, the Gamecocks and the Tigers, it's, you know, they, they just don't get along. Yeah, that, that's what I heard. I mean, I, you guys usually have the upper hand. Uh, I know we talked earlier, the basketball team, um, the women's basketball team at USC is um, pretty good. But And that's another thing, dude. Everyone says USC, and I had no idea what that – I thought they were talking about, like, University of Southern California. I didn't know that was a thing down there either. Um, wild. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so you are at Clemson now. Did you always want to go there? Yeah, so uh, I've been a Clemson fan since I was little, since about, like, eight years old. And uh, I've always wanted to come to the school. And so uh, when I was going through the process, I, I mean, I, I was getting recruited for soccer. So I wanted to go to a good soccer school. I wanted to play in the ACC. Yeah. And I was like, you know, Clemson's in the ACC. You know, I might, I might want to give them a look. And so um, I was kind of, you know, thinking about NC State, Wake Forest, Clemson. Those are kind of my main three. Mm-hmm. I ended up coming to a Clemson camp, um, a summer camp, and I played well. And then I got – an offer so um I've always wanted to come here so it's really cool being able to get to play at my dream school because I've liked Clemson ever since I was little dude that's so cool so were you a really high recruit coming out of high school um so in terms of like high recruit in terms of soccer like I was in the top 150 for my age group. they do it a little bit different than football and basketball but they have like a thing called IMG top 150 which is like the top 150 players in your age group and I was in that um I wouldn't say I was a top recruit I kind of made my own way a little bit. I mean, yeah. I played at the top academy. I had one national team call up, but I wouldn't say I was a top recruit. I kind of went to the Clemson's camp and made a name for myself on my own, kind of. Dude, that's that's so cool. Um, so you, I, from like what I've seen, you started at Clemson. And you you didn't start your your freshman year, or and you just kind of touch a ball your, your sophomore year. So take me through what that was like, kind of just like I guess being on the bench and then. We'll, we'll get into, you know, your national title run here, but just like being like the guy out there, is that like a pretty cool transition? Yeah, it's a really cool transition. Um, that's one of the things that I had to really learn coming to a college team, especially a top D1 team like Clemson, is that you come from a club where you're the guy and, you know, you come in as a freshman thinking that you're going to do this and that and then you get here and then around a bunch of talented players. And so my freshman year, you know, I really had to be humble um, and be very coach, uh, coachable and vulnerable to really learn information. And my freshman year, I pretty much sat. Um, I was a substitute pretty much the whole time. I got in a few games here and there, but I, I was usually on the bench. And my sophomore year, um, I was also kind of on the bench, but I was more getting subbed in, getting some a few minutes here and there. And then, you know, my junior year, that's when things started to pick up. So, you know, just – really staying with the process, um, staying patient, important thing, um, just learning uh, and growing until you're up. So, yeah. Yeah, dude, I had that same experience too. It's, you know, you come from your home area and you're like, yeah, man, yeah, I just yeah. did this. And you get there. I just, I remember, and wrestling is just one of those sports where you just get crushed, like literally just like beaten down. And it is humbling. You do have to be vulnerable to learn things. Um, so that's that is part of the process, man. It's and it's a cool process because you can see the growth, you know. Um, it's pretty cool. So take me through this past year. You guys just won an NCAA title, and you know, obviously you scored both the goals in there, but take me through like what that experience is like going through. Is this your guys' first title at Clemson? No, it's our third. Okay, your third. I'm sure when was the last time you guys did it? uh 87 so it had been 34 years been yeah that's time. that's crazy so yeah what was what was like all that hype like I'm sure it was wild uh yeah take me through it yeah so uh it kind of all started uh in the spring of 2021 pretty much when we lost in the sweet 16 to Marshall uh, and, yeah. and 
NCAA tournament. We were the number seed, um, you know, favorites to win it. We lose in PKs in Sweet 16. From that moment, we had fifth-year players and seniors who ended up coming back for their sixth and their fifth years. So we didn't okay. really – yeah, we didn't really lose anyone. And so we were like, all right, like, we didn't get it done last year. Like, this, this is our chance to get it done. Like, we're going to go for it. And so throughout the season, we had a really hot start, went – seven and oh eight and oh we were very good and then we ended up losing two games back to back and we kind of got in a little bit of a funk um ended up coming out of it and uh had a decent run the acc tournament but then we lost to duke in the semifinals um it was a really heartbreaking game we could have won that game but you know we lost it okay and so from that point that was really like when we're like all right you know what screw that we lost the ACC, but now let's get the big trophy at the end. And so that was a whole mindset throughout the tournament. And, you know, with all the old guys that we had, the sixth, fifth, and fourth years, we had great leadership. And it really yeah. showed going to the tournament. We were playing tight games, super tight. I'm telling you, like, we went to overtime with Denver, and we won on a PK in overtime. Then we played <laughs> Do you take those PKs? Like, you got to – so – you got to go through me real quick. Like, what is your approach to that? Because, you know, everyone sees, like, Ronaldo, like, take that breath. Or, like, Neymar will come up differently. Like, what, what's your, like, approach to that? Like, I'm not even going to lie. My approach, when I see the spot, I just, like, act like I'm the man. I, I just act like I'm the, yeah, I'm the best player on the field. I'm like, I don't care who, who anyone who's around me. I'm the best on this field, and I'm going to bang this in the back of the net. And that's the that you got to have when you're stepping up. Yeah, dude, I love that. That's That's cool. That's got to be one of the, like, most pressure, like, moments in any sport of PK. Um, yeah. So but, yeah, so, <laughs> but, yeah, continue. You're playing Denver PKs. Yeah, Denver, we got a PK in overtime, won it. We left it late in the game to win it. Then we played against Kentucky. We were up 1-0 the whole game. Then they score in the last five minutes to tie the game. Yeah. We're like, oh, my God. And then with one minute left, we score – uh to win two to one so like those, those games were super we were literally like not really winning games convincing and so people were thinking we were going to get knocked out like in the sweet 16 elite eight people didn't think we were going to win the whole thing yeah and then, uh, when we went to oregon state i tell you what that is probably the hardest game i have ever played in my college career why is that so from clemson south Carolina to Corvallis, Oregon. We we fly all the way across the country. Yeah. It's cold. It's rainy in Oregon around December. The conditions are trash. They're the number one team, the number one seed in the nation. We were the number eight seed. And they're really? just playing us. Yeah. They're just playing us off the park. They were sick. I'm not even gonna lie. And we hung in there and we got a PK late in the game to tie it up one to one. And we took them to a PK shootout. And our keeper, George Marks, he absolutely he he was amazing and I had to take a PK as well and yeah. so uh I'm not gonna lie I was a little bit nervous <laughs> going up <laughs> to the spot and so like I almost had to be like cocky in my head just to like get the nerves out of like yeah, uh, like, you're, yeah. You're, the best. you're the no just like put it in my head and uh I put my PK in the back of that so it was good and we ended up winning away in Oregon and uh that was yeah. the point we were like we're gonna win the whole thing if we're gonna beat the number one seed yeah Dude, that's so sick. And then you went on and you played Notre Dame in the semifinal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beat them. My dad went to Notre Dame, so I actually like to root for them for some things. Uh interesting. But yeah, what was that game? Was that like a lot like a little bit easier? Like not as um was that it, in Notre Dame or in North Carolina? It, it was in North Carolina and Cary. Yeah. It was it was okay. a different type of game. Um more so because Notre Dame is like a really good defensive team. Yeah. And my best way to describe Notre Dame is just really stubborn. It's really hard to break them down. They're really good at what they do, and it's always hard to play teams like that. And yeah. so just like the last game, it ended up one-to-one. We had to go to PKs again. We had two <laughs> back-to-back PK shootouts. Yeah. And we ended up winning in PKs again versus Notre Dame. George, our goalkeeper, again, played amazing. Stopped yeah. it. And, uh, you know, we were on to the finals, and it was a crazy game. Did you take a PK there as well? No, I actually didn't take a PK. I was I was the sixth taker. So okay. if a guy didn't score, I was gonna be the one to take the PK. Right, right. I gotcha. And cool. the nerves were even more crazy that game because they were having a high school soccer showcase. Yeah. So there was twelve thousand people there. Wow. Which is a ton for a soccer game. Yeah, no, that is dude. That is. So then 
Yeah, then you're in, you're in the final against Washington. Yeah. And you can take me through that, but that's crazy. That's that's what I see like on your like TikTok, Instagram, all that is like that game. Because you had two goals. It's yeah. absolutely wild. You got to take me through that. Yeah. So I, I tell this to a lot of people that that morning it felt it felt different. Right. I literally woke up that morning. And I was like, we're about to win the national championship. Yeah. But, but before I even put on my gear or anything, I, I just knew right when I woke up. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to the yeah, field. That's, and, that's probably yeah, why you want it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, our coach, he wanted us to kind of like all walk out at the same time. And yeah. here in North Carolina, I think it's only like four and a half, five hours away from Clemson. Washington's all the way across the country. Yeah. So we had all of our fans show up. So it was almost like it was a home game for us. So like Washington walks out the tunnel and like, you know, there's a few cheers, you know, whatever. We walk out as a group and the whole yeah. stadium just like completely roars. That's and awesome. like, from that moment, from that moment, we were pretty much already up. So it was, it was crazy. But uh, in terms of the goals, I mean, it was like 26 seconds in and the keeper. Like the whole the game, ball. 26 seconds game in the whole game, just like the first half. No, like my, my first goal when I scored was 26 seconds into the game. Yeah. Like, the game barely even started and yeah the whole game and the keeper just whips it and I just go and score in less than a minute we already have one zero I know it was crazy I couldn't believe it the ball fell to me yeah yeah and then, and then your second goal was was that a header yeah yeah I mean that was just I was just feeling myself you know I just scored a goal <laughs> in the natty I was like I saw the ball in the air I was like you know might as well go for the header and I was like 14 12 yards out maybe which is yeah. really far for a header I just put my head on it. It goes in the top corner. I'm like, what is going on here? It was crazy. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's awesome. What, what was that feeling like after? I, I see that clip of you like laying back and yeah. you know, like that must have been, that must have been unbelievable. It was a crazy feeling. I mean, so many emotions were going through my head. I, I was trying to see my family actually after the game and like celebrate with my team. And I go over and like two people grab me for an interview. And I'm like, okay, now let me go see my family. Then two more people grab me for an interview and then yeah. everyone was like taking pictures. I was like, so like, I got to see my family a little bit, but it, it was crazy. Just like so many emotions, everyone celebrating and stuff. It was crazy. Yeah. Dude, that's so cool. I mean, you'll remember that for the rest of your life and hopefully you can carry some of that momentum. You know, I know you want to go in the MLS. Yeah. Um, that'd be sick, but this next year. So obviously you're battling through this injury right now and, and you're recovering well. Um, what are you, what are you looking forward to most this year? Um, I'm probably looking forward to being a leader on the team yeah. uh, you know, going into my senior year. A lot of people are like, how can you, you know, make this year enjoyable for you? And I think for me doing something I've never done before, it's one thing when you win the national championship and have an enjoyable season. It's another mm -hmm. thing when you do it as a captain and as a leader on the team. Yeah. And I just can't wait to help lead this team, you know, with the experience that I have playing in big games and we lost 12 guys, uh, you know, six of them went professional in the draft. The wow. other six of them aren't on the team anymore. So it's going to be a fairly new team with a new culture. But, you know, my job, what I'm excited for is to make sure that the standard stays the same and make sure that Clemson soccer stays on top. So I'm yeah. really excited for that. Yeah, that's so cool. So you're, you're uh, an official captain for this year? No, 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 no. I'm not the official captain, but I am one of the leaders on the team. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I do see myself uh, um, being a captain in the future for sure. This dude that's awesome good for you so yeah so after this year you do want to try and go to the mls that's that's the goal yeah that's the goal uh, you know after the season you know god willing you know everything goes well um enter the draft in i guess january and see uh who picks me up or maybe just sign to a club uh around december january as well so yeah dude, that's awesome good for you well i know i'll be watching uh, i told you my brother goes to clemson and i'm definitely be paying attention uh, a lot more so What's that one trait that you have, if you had to, like, pinpoint it, that has allowed you to have the success that you have had? I, I'd say humility. Okay. I think, I think that's probably my best quality that's gotten me to where I've been. I feel like a lot of people who've been in, who might have been in my position would have thrown in the towel, would have given up, would have acted a certain way. The process and the journey that I've been in Clemson mm -hmm. – it's extremely unique because what a lot of people don't know is I came into Clemson as a left back. Um, so I was a recruited left back. I wasn't a forward at all. And, you know, the guy who was in front of me, Charlie Asensio, amazing player. And so, you know, I was, you know, competing with him for the spot. And, you know, freshman year, I didn't really play that much. 
sophomore year, I was kind of in between. A lot of people, when they don't play their first two years, yeah. you know, they enter the transfer portal. You know, they might think to go elsewhere. And you know, for me, it was all about staying patient, being humble, you know, learning from Charlie, you know, learning from the coaching staff and really learning how to yeah. play so that, you know, when I was blessed with the opportunity because Kamarni and Grayson ended up leaving for the draft a season early, the left wing position was wide open. And so coach was like, hey, you know, you've been learning the system. You have some speed. I've seen you play forward before, but let's stick you up top. And because of my preparation and, you know, my training and, you know, being humble and my learning of the system, when I got offered the position, I just, I just grabbed it and I ran away with it. And so I, I take a lot of pride in, you know, my humility and my patience and, you know, um, being able to have what I had today. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. I, I like that answer. And there's, um, there's, it's sometimes hard that like, that line between being confident, arrogant, and humble, like, and, that, and that's a hard line to have, right? Because you got to have confidence. Like you said, you go up to yeah. the line to take a PK and you're like, I'm the man. But when you're like learning things, you got to be humble and take things in. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a hard thing to have. And the best athletes definitely have that uh, for sure. But yeah, so before we head out, I want to ask you a few uh, World Cup questions. You know, obviously, Qatar 2022. So who's, first of all, how do you think the U.S. is going to be? Uh, personally, I'm a huge uh, U.S. men's national team fan. Yeah. So I I think we will make it out of the group with Wales. Um, I don't think England's going to make it out of the group. Really? That's bold. A bold opinion. I (laughs) I think that's going to happen. And I think we, I think we will probably get knocked out in the round of 16. Maybe we're probably going to play Netherlands, Ecuador, or Senegal. Okay. Um, If we play Senegal or Ecuador, I think there's a big, we make to the, fi- the final uh, eight yeah. game. Um, but, you know, I'll be more conservative with the answer. I'll say we make it to the round of 16. Okay. Um, but, yeah. Sweet. And then who do you, who do you think is going to win it all? Who do I think? I don't want to go with the boring answer and say Brazil. Um, they have a ton of firepower. But I genuinely think Argentina has a very good chance. Really? I think Argentina can win it all. Yeah. Yeah. How about, how about Portugal with Ronaldo? I think he's got a shot. Yeah, I, I think he does have a shot. His group is – he's got some decent teams in the pathway. It might, you know, be a little bit harder. But, you know, when you have Ronaldo on your team, you know, you always have a good chance of winning the yeah. World Cup. So. Well, they have some good players. They have Bruno Fernandez. They have, like – they're yeah. they're a solid team. So, we'll they're see. They're a very good team. Yeah, for um, sure. But I am super excited to see the U.S. in the World Cup because, obviously, you know, they weren't uh, in Russia. And I was pretty yeah. bummed to see that. But – yeah, it'll be cool, man. It is going to be weird being in the fall, but um, yeah, that's, that's Qatar. But yeah, dude. Well, thanks for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I feel like you're a pretty inspiring guy, and, and hopefully, I can come um, see a game if I'm down in Clemson. Be super cool. Yeah, yeah, man. Thanks for having me. This was really fun. Yeah, of course. All right, bro. All right.